up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Maddie Pruitt here. I'm so glad you guys are joining me for another video. I thought today it would be really fun to talk on dun 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 singleness. I probably get asked more than anything else how to be content in the season of singleness, how to be confident in who you are, and what to look for in a relationship. And some of you guys actually sent me some questions on Instagram. So I'll answer some of those at the end, but I, I do have a lot of thoughts. I definitely don't have it figured out. I'm in this season of singleness with you guys, and I'm not always perfect at it. I definitely have moments of getting sad or wondering what it would be like to be married and all of these things, and a lot of my friends are married and are in relationships. But I have learned how to be content in this season of singleness, and I have learned how to grow in confidence in who I am, knowing that I don't need anybody else to complete me. And so I thought we would talk about that and, yeah, and have some fun. It'll be a great time. If you guys don't know, I was on season 24 of The Bachelor, which was quite an experience. And I definitely learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about relationships. I learned a lot about people. I learned a lot about life in general. And so before I ever went on the show, I really took some time to really get to that place where I was confident in who I was and confident in the beliefs that I have. It didn't work out with me and The Bachelor, and so I'm in the season of singleness. Well, just to backtrack, so for me, I actually was in a relationship for four years all throughout college. And that was the person that I honestly thought I was gonna marry. Like, I was like, this is my husband. <laughs> he checks off all the things that I've looked for and wanted, but there was one thing that was missing, and that was peace. Like, I just did not have a peace about it. I just did not feel like we were God's best for each other. I felt like what he was supposed to do with his life, what I felt like I was supposed to do with my life, like, just did not mesh well, and we weren't gonna be able to complement each other well. And went through a whole season where I didn't date anyone and all of my friends were getting married. I was that typical quote, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. I think I was in like 10 weddings. I called my mom and I was like, I was crying and I was like, I'm gonna be at this rehearsal dinner and everyone at my table is married. Like they're all gonna be sitting next to their husband. I'm gonna be sitting there single. But I was just like in my feels, you know how, how it gets sometimes. And I called my mom and she just really encouraged me. She was like, Maddie, you would rather be sitting at that table alone than sitting next to the wrong husband. My job. So when I was in that time in my life where I was learning, who am I? Who do I wanna be? What kind of life do I want to live? How do I want to be remembered? And I went through a lot of times and a lot of moments where I started attaching myself and placing my identity in all of the wrong things. On people, on relationships, and my emotions are just all over the place. And then I got to this place where I was like, you know what? I know what it was like to have a really firm relationship with God. And when he was the source of my joy, the source of my identity, the source of just my worthiness, like I knew that I belonged, I knew that I was enough, and I wanna get back to that place where I fully believe that again. And so I did some soul searching, and I took some time. And during that year, leading up to The Bachelor, I felt very alone, and there were many moments where I cried myself to sleep. But I knew that that was a season that I really needed to grow in confidence in who I am, to know what I believe, and to be firm in that. And during that time, I really dove into God's Word and I started reading about confidence and strength. And I think for so long, I thought confidence was in self. I thought, oh, if I do more and people affirm that, or if I perform well and people appreciate that, or if I get that trophy or I get that like or I get that retweet, then that must mean I'm doing something right. Then that must mean that I am confident or that I'm strong. And what I realized is that that was not true, that I would get the likes, I would get the retweets, I would get the trophies, and I still found myself like, ugh, like I just feel the exact same, maybe even worse. And I constantly felt empty, and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna dive all in with Jesus, and I'm gonna let him tell me who I am. I started reading God's word, and I started just speaking over, over myself. I was like, okay, God says that I belong, that I don't have to strive for belonging, I don't have to hope for belonging in a relationship or in my work environment or in my social like sphere. I, I can just be confident and know that I already belong to someone. I already am a child of God. That's who God says I am. I kind of switched that performer-based mindset of I have to perform to be loved, I have to perform to be accepted, and got into this place where I was like, no, I already am enough. I don't have to prove that to anybody. 
I took time to just really just accept the way that God wired me. And I think a lot of times people would always just like labeled me as you're very strong willed, you're very competitive, you're very confrontational. And I saw those things as really bad. Like I was like, those are bad things, right? But I took that season to really start embracing those things and learning to steward them well and see them as gifts and not as bad things. And I was like, oh my gosh, how can I steward strength to where it's a beautiful thing and passion to where it's a beautiful thing. And so I started embracing the, the workings and the wiring and the way that I, I am, how God created me. I know that God created me with intention and with purpose to do the great things that he's prepared for me to do. That's what God's word says in Ephesians 2.10. And so if that's what God's word says, then, then that must be true, right? This sounds kind of weird, but I started dating myself. I was like, okay, what do you do when you date somebody? You get to know them. So I took that season. I was like, I'm not gonna go on any dates. I'm gonna really get to know myself. I'm gonna date myself well. I'm gonna know myself better than anybody else. I'm not gonna hope that somebody else is gonna tell me who I am or that somebody else is gonna know me better. And when I get in a relationship, I'm not looking for them to complete that or I'm not looking for them to affirm that. Like I already know who I am and they're just coming alongside to do it with me and to do life with me. And then when I went on the show, when I went on The Bachelor, I got to come in from a place of abundance and I wasn't coming from a place of lack. I wasn't coming from a place of if you give me a rose, then that must mean I'm worthy. If you keep me around longer, then that must mean I'm accepted. Then that must mean I'm enough. I was able to remain confident throughout that entire time. I didn't let comparison rob me of that time. I really was able to stay confident in who I was because I was so sure of it. And it actually was really cool because I had so many, so many people reach out on the show, watching the show, just asking like, how, how are you so confident? And I've been able to say, like it's solely based on God and my relationship with God and who he says that I am and that's where my confidence comes from I went through the bachelor I came off the bachelor and you know still single and still in the same season but I grew a lot I learned a lot and I was so sure of what I believed and now I'm able to look at you guys not eye to eye I wish it was eye to eye I wish I could give you a big old hug and just remind you how awesome you are but I say it through the screen and I hope you know it means just as much and it's just as genuine. But I want you to know like you are enough because God says you're enough. I just remembered that uh, Victoria Fuller gave me this bracelet that says single lady. And I wear this to remind myself that I'm single but I'm content in that. And so I just love that. I just saw that and just remembered. And then once I started feeling like I was in a good place, then I started, you know, going on some dates. I, I met a guy, I started dating him. We dated for about eight months and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about relationships. It didn't end the way that we probably wanted it to end. And again, who knows what the future holds, but I know right now I'm exactly where God has me and I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I have what I call my three C's. It sounds a little intense, but honestly, it really helps me. And I really encourage you, like if you've never taken the time to write out what you want in a spouse and what you are praying for and what you are hoping for in a spouse, take the time to write it down. And this goes for guys, this goes for girls. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what season of life you're in. Like, it doesn't matter how old you are. And these are the three things that I'm going through in my mind when I'm thinking about what I date this person. So one is what are his convictions? What does his faith look like? What are his beliefs? And I don't just mean like, oh, I believe in Jesus or, oh, I go to church or, oh, I believe in doing the right thing. I mean like, what does he believe right now? And how is he walking those out? How is he living those out? Does he really spend time with Jesus? Does he have a real relationship with Jesus? Would he be able to challenge me in my relationship with Jesus? Is he firm in those convictions or is he a leader? Is he like, no, this is what I believe. This is why I believe it. And I'm unwavering. I'm not giving in because that's the kind of man that I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who knows who he is, who knows what he believes, and he knows the why. He knows the purpose behind what he believes. The second C, what is his character? Guys, what is her character? You want a Proverbs 31 woman, I'm telling you. Girls, you want a man of strong character. You want a guy who can lead you. You want a guy who is a man of his word that is gonna prove his faithfulness, that's gonna prove his loyalty, that's gonna love you well, that's gonna be respectful to others. Like, look at how he's treating people. Look at how he treats the person he doesn't know. Look at how he treats his family. Look at how he treats his friends. Look at the kind of people that he surrounds himself with. You want a person of strong character because I'm telling you, it's not gonna be the attraction and the 
hotness of a person that's going to carry you through tough times. It's going to be that man or that woman's character that's going to keep them there. Because when times get tough, man, I'm telling you, good looks are not enough. Man, that, that kind of like flows. When times are tough, good looks are not enough. And then the third one is chemistry. So I know that kind of sounds like I was contradicting myself like a second ago, but I do think that this is important. I don't think it's the most important, and I definitely don't think it's the only thing you should look at. Yes, chemistry is important. Be attracted to the person. Don't find someone that you're like, I'm not attracted to them at all, but you're just like, oh, but they're a good person. Like, no, but don't let that be the leading factor. Whatever those things are for you, it doesn't have to be my three C's. It doesn't have to be convictions, character, and chemistry. But whatever that is for you, I'm telling you, write it down and continue to pray over it and do not settle it breaks my heart because I see so many people who are willing to settle because they're just tired of being alone I'm telling you you would rather be lonely and single than lonely and married keep your standards high keep your roots deep know who you are be content in the season that God has you in and write out what it is that you're looking for I grew up in Alabama everyone gets married at like 20 and my parents got married at 18 my mom had me at 23 I'm a little past that, you know, I'm 25, and I'm not where I thought I was gonna be, but I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And singleness is such a gift because it's a time where you're discovering who you are. It's a time where you're going after wholeheartedly your dreams and the vision that God's put on your heart. And it's a time too where you have undivided devotion to the Lord and undivided devotion to your friends and your family. You're not distracted by someone else. And so take this time seriously and be grateful for it. So I'm done with my spiel. I just ranted and just shared my heart with you guys. I do want to answer some questions as we wrap up. I got you guys to send me a few questions on Instagram. Emily asked, how do you remain pure and what are your boundaries? That's an amazing question. I would say it's really important to know what you value. And I think that's why it's so important to have that season or to have that moment where you know who you are and you know what you believe because every decision that you make in life, it's always gonna stem from what you value. And if purity is something that you're pursuing, I've made a decision to wait until marriage. And the reason for that is, is because it goes back down to what I value most. And for me, right now, I see this season as I'm fully committed to God, body, soul, and spirit. He has all of me. And then one day, I'm gonna make a decision with my spouse that is gonna say, hey, now you get me. Body, soul, and spirit, I'm yours. And then we get to be made one together and then serve God together. And so until that day, right now, God has all of me and that's why I've made that decision. Again, you may have not made the same decision or maybe you wanna make that decision, but you just didn't know how. Well, I'm just here to encourage you. It's always gonna come down to what you value and you have to make the decision outside of the heat of the moment. You can't make it when you know, you're really feeling it with that person, you're alone in a room, the lights are off and you've had a really great day and the best date and of course like it's gonna be very easy to give into your feelings and your cravings and your desires in that moment and once you know your why once you know what you value everything else kind of just like takes care of itself to be honest and so for me when it comes to boundaries that's something that's communicated at the very beginning of the relationship here's my boundaries and here's the why here's what I believe here here are my convictions and then just continue to pray for strength it's not always easy especially when you fall in love with someone there's gonna be moments that are very tough and very challenging, but it's always gonna come back down to what you value most. So I hope that answered your question, Emily. Anna said, how to let go of the person you were certain was the one. Weirdly, I can speak from experience. As I shared earlier, you know, I dated a guy for four years. I thought he was the one. I was very confident in that. I would never date someone for four years if I just was trying to date them and didn't think they were gonna be my person. And that was really hard when we broke up. Like it was not only the loss of a person and of a best friend and of a relationship, but it also was kind of the death of a dream. It was the loss of hope almost. What really got me through it and what I continue to cling to is that what is meant for you will be yours and God's best for you will be for you. If that person was removed out of your life, you have to trust and believe either they were removed for a season or they were removed for a reason. And you need to cling to that and believe that and, and trust that. But I encourage you to keep hoping and keep dreaming and keep praying. God sees you, God loves you, God's got you. And don't just dwell on what was lost. If he is meant for you, he will be yours. And that's what I encourage you with. I'm gonna answer one more question. Brandon asked, how do you come to love yourself and feel enough after a heartbreak? I love that question, Brandon. And honestly, like 
it is really tough. Like it is really tough. I'll just be real. Like I had a lot of moments where after breakups and after heartbreaks, I was crying in my bed and I didn't want to get out of bed and I wanted to stay in bed and I wanted to watch rom-coms, I wanted to listen to sad music, I wanted to eat ice cream and I wanted to just cry and I wanted to stay there. But the truth is, after a relationship ends or after I've experienced heartbreak or I've experienced loss, because I already am enough on my own because God says I'm enough and because Christ is enough in me, even at the end of a relationship, I never question if I'm enough. So if that is something that you're questioning and something you're wondering, I really, really encourage you, please take time to know who you are and to grow in confidence in that and to know that you're enough and you don't need anybody else. You do not need anybody else to complete you, to make you enough, to make you complete. Like you don't need that. It is okay to grieve and to, and to be upset and to have those moments. I think the worst thing you can do is suppress those feelings, sweep it under the rug and then end up carrying it with you into the next relationship and then you're like, man, I never dealt with these feelings. Deal with the feelings that you're feeling. Don't suppress them, don't hide them, face them, but don't dwell on them. Don't just sit in them, but then remind yourself of what's to be gained. Remind yourself of what's to come. Remind yourself that God sees you, that God loves you, that God has the best for you. Clinging to scripture and worshiping and praying, like that really helps me. In those moments, I'm taking that to the Lord instead of to a substance or instead of to a person or instead of to anything else, like I'm taking that to God. And also also, I really, really, really encourage you to spend time with good people, like surround yourself with friendships and with people around you that are going to encourage you and that are going to remind you of who you are and remind you of what you're worth and remind you of what God has for you. Whatever you have to do, find good godly community, whether that's getting plugged into a church, joining a small group, joining a serve project somewhere or whatever that looks like for you, like go on a mission trip. I don't know, but I hope that answered the question. I hope that helped. Okay, phew, it has been a long hangout moment that I hope that we both learned a lot and grew a lot. I do want to do another video. I want to do a video on relationships because I also get asked a lot of questions on what dating should look like, how to know when the person's the right person, what to look for for marriage. And I actually have what I call my three P's that I'll share in that video of what I look for when it comes to a husband. If you have any questions or any comments that you want to mention on this video or that you want me to include in the next video, please comment below. Also a few books that have really helped me during this season. One of my favorite, favorite books has been The Sacred Search. I have this one right here with me. The, the other two I'll just tell you about and we can link them below. But The Sacred Search has been such an amazing book. I pretty much highlighted and underlined this whole entire book. If you're married watching this video, he actually also has The Sacred Marriage. Um, that I sent to my parents. I bought it because I like read this book and I like, sent the sacred marriage to my parents because I was like, this book was so good. So I'm sure the marriage book is great. But I also wanted to tell you guys about Elisa Turkhurst's book. It's called Uninvited. That is a really amazing book if you are dealing with rejection or past hurts and pains, or maybe you're looking for ways to be confident in who you are and you don't even know where to begin because you can't even learn to love yourself. And that's something that you really struggle with. Please, please read that book. It's so good. And then the last one I wanted to tell you guys about for those of you who are in a relationship, there actually is a book by Henry Cloud called Boundaries, and I really encourage you to read it. It's actually not even just a faith-based book. It's, it's regarding a lot of different kinds of boundaries, how to just create healthy boundaries in your life in general, and how they're so important to know what to say yes to and what to say no to and how to navigate through that. And so I'm constantly reading so many books, so I encourage you, like obviously, God's word is the most important, so please read this. This is what's gonna tell you who you are and get you through the hardest seasons of your life. But thank you so much. I just wanna remind you, you have so much greatness inside of you. Don't ever question it, and I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember that you were made for this moment. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. Can't wait to see you guys next Monday. Love y'all.